scripture lesson today is, is Genesis chapter 22, <coughs> reading from verse 1 to 8. We're going to conclude our series, a lengthy series today, with the stories of, of Abraham. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday, and then the following Sunday is Easter Sunday. So let me read the scriptures to you. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. Note that God tested Abraham. He tested him. He tried him. He gave him a test. And he said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah, sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain, I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place that God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in a distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we'll come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the land for the burnt offering? Abraham answered it. God will provide the land for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place that God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by it, its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of your enemies, and through your offspring, all nations on the earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Please pray with me. Dear God, thank you for your holy scriptures. We ask for wisdom and knowledge and understanding, and then as we share your scriptures. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, this is, this is just a, a, a great story, but we have to understand it in its context. Now, so many people have said that um, God used this story in the Old Testament as a shadow of things to come. He used the life of Abraham and Isaac as a canvas to paint a portrait of himself about how he himself will offer his only begotten son in the future for the sins of humankind. But we have to still read the story from the perspective of Abraham. God comes to him, and if you know the story of Abraham, he's been called, he worked with God for years after years. He was looking to have a child of his own, and for 25 years, the wife did not have a child. And after 25 years, God gave them a son. And that son 
His name was Isaac. He loved this child because the child was born in his old age. In Jewish culture, and I think in many cultures, children continue the legacy of their fathers. They take the name of their fathers and continue with the inheritance or the, or the rights and hopes and the aspirations of the father. You know, from one father to another, to the son, and you know, continues. But now, you know, we have to be very inclusive and know that our legacy is also carried on on our daughters and our sons as well. Right? Do you agree with me? Yeah. Very good. And, and we also have to look at the attitude of Abraham. God comes to him and tells him, offer me your son. Now, if it was you and me, we can say to God, well, Lord, I have to think about it. I have to run by my family and friends. I have to think about what they say. Or we have to, you know, it's just going to be terrible for us to, to say to God, Lord, that's a terrible thing, you know. How can you ask that? I was talking to a friend uh, the other day and I told the friend what I was going to be preaching about and he said to me, <laughs> he didn't care if God told him to do that. There was no way he was going to do that. You know? <laughs> uh, but I've often said this, your character, your true character will show or will shine out when you have a test, when you have to perform under pressure. If you say you obey God, then God is going to test your faith. Whatever you say you believe or whatever you say you, you, you really profess to, it's going to be tested. If, if you, sometimes God tests our patience, so do you put very irritable people in your life. And they're going to get on your nerves all the time till you learn patience, till you, you learn the test of patience or faithfulness, whatever. God will test that. But the point is, in our own lives, sometimes God will require us to make a huge sacrifice. God will demand something from you and I. That thing may inconvenience us. That thing may be, may be unreasonable from our rational and human perspective. It may seem unreasonable. Why is God asking all me to do this? Why is God asking me to sacrifice this? But the truth is, it may not make sense, but God uses inconveniences and demands on our lives to bring us to the place that he wants us to be. The path of God requires sacrifices. Sometimes, sometimes you have to give God your crown. Give God the things that you value most in your life. Because God is going to request that. He's going to ask for your time. And maybe you don't have time, enough time. But God is going to say, well, but you need to give me one hour of your life every, every day. And you're going to say, well, I have to go to the ball game, and I have to do this, and I have to do this. God says, well, give me that one hour. Give me, make a sacrifice of that time for me. Or sometimes God is going to demand your treasure. Maybe you have all kinds of projects that you all kinds of bills you have to pay. And God is still going to say, well, but, but give me a part of that, you know. You know, take care of, give me that offering and I'm going to help you pay your bills. But you're going to say, well, I don't have much. This is not going to be enough to pay the bills and to give you a portion. And God is going to give to me first. It may not make sense. The test of your loyalty to God comes when God asks things from you, asks you to make a sacrifice. God will ask you to give up your Isaac. Isaac may not be a literally son that you are going to start in the heart for God, but he's going to ask something that you, something valuable in your life. Life is not going to be easy and smooth sailing on all of us. God makes demands. See, God makes demands, and one of the demands he makes is a relationship. 
God demands a relationship. He said, I want a relationship with you. So he demanded a relationship with Abraham. And he said, because you have a relationship with me, I can ask you to do this for me. God also demands obedience. When God instructs us to do things, he demands ob obedience. Because obedience is the highest virtue of your Christian faith. Obedience <coughs> is better to God than anything. See, we sing the song, hymn number 467, Trust and Obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. That's it. And God will ask you to, to obey. So he called Abraham and said, you know, go and sacrifice your son. He could, his response would have said, no, no, I'm not going to do it. This doesn't make sense. Because his hopes, his aspirations, all his, his aspirations were deposited in his son Isaac. He wants his son to carry on his legacy. And God is saying, I want that to be gone. No, that's not good. But sometimes God asks us to pay a very high price for our loyalty. But we don't have to forget that God has paid the highest price for our redemption. There's nothing God is going to ask us to do that he has not already done. See, God had, gave, had already, before the foundations of the world, prepared to offer his son as a sacrifice. So asking Abraham as a test wasn't anything difficult. You know, sometimes your faith is beyond your sense. It's beyond what you can feel, what you can think about, what you can feel, what you can touch. It may not make sense. It may be abstract. But God is requiring you to go through that. The problems we have with our own lives is that we often ask the question, why? Why is this happening? Why is God asking me to do this? Why is this sacrifice? Why is that? Well, why is that? But I'm here to tell you that God never answers the question, why? Because when he came to Abraham, he didn't say to him, Abraham, you know, go and sacrifice your son. And here is the reasons why. God never comes with five reasons why you should do this or do that. You know why God doesn't answer the question why? Because why has a long tail? Well, you didn't catch that. <laughs> but because the path of God will always lead to something good. <laughs> because you see, even when we go, even when you cannot figure out why things are happening, it says all things will work together for good. For them that love God and are called according to his purpose. So the path of God leads to something good. It may be bad. But sometimes bad things will still end up to be good. Misfortunes will end up to be blessings in disguise. Stumbling blocks may end up to be stepping stones. Trials may end up, may end up to be trials. God works that. God uses unusual and un different methods to bless us. But the point is, Abraham spoke the message of faith. You know, your mouth and your mouth is very powerful. The things you speak has power to come to fruition. So if you continue to say negative things, negative things will manifest in your life. But if you speak positive things, positive, positive things will happen. You see, Abraham, he said to his servants, I and the Lord will go and worship the Lord and will come back. Now God did not say they should go and worship him. But he spoke that he and the Lord will go and worship. So God made sure that he and the Lord will go and worship and come back. The other thing is that when his son, his son was not dumb. He knew what was going on. He knew something was wrong. Because he had observed Abraham make sacrifices all the time. And when you are making sacrifices, the first thing you need is the lamb or the ram or the sheep or whatever. That's the first thing that identifies you or identifies the sacrifice because that's what you're going to offer. So he's been traveling with his dad for three days and he realized, well, something is missing here. And so he asked the dad, now, I see the wood, I see the fire, I see the knife. Where is the lamb for the sacrifice? His father could have said, 
son, you got to talk. Today is a very sad day. I can't believe what God is asking me to do. Today you're going to be roasting on that <laughs> You know, he could have just told him, son, I got to do this because God is asking me. But he didn't say that. He said God will provide. And God has to provide. Listen to this. This one, you have to catch this. This is inspiration. You know, this is not in my notes. This is what you call inspiration. Think, listen carefully to what I'm going to say. Do you know that while Abraham and his son was going up the mountain, God had already put the ram there, but he wouldn't see it. Do you know that? God has already, God is, is beyond what we can see. And he always, he sees the end from the beginning. But we human beings don't see the end. You know, we don't see the whole picture. But as they were going there, God has already prepared the land. But it takes faith to go up the mountain and surrender and then see the, the reality of God. But before you, if you say, well, I want to see the land before I believe that God is going to provide, that's not going to work with God. That's the, that's the, the whole thing about faith. But God is going to provide but you have to believe with the eye of faith that is going to provide. And you have to prove to God that you believe. I always use giving an offering as a test of our obedience. When you put an offering in the plate, it is your faith that God will take care of you. It is your dependence on God. It is your security on God that you believe that he is a God that provides. And the test of your faith is that you can put that offering in that plate and God will still provide your resources. Even if you have limited resources. You just trust in his sustenance. Because if you can't see it with the eye of faith, then you're not going to be able to give because you still have, you still have things to pay, bills to pay, and you can use your money to do other things rather than to give it to God. So, But your faith is what allows you to do that. Listen to this. God will require you to make sacrifices. Things that you cherish in your life. God was maybe a hobby, maybe a pastime, maybe something that you, you really love. God is going to ask you to give it up. It's for a test. And listen to what I'm going to say also here. God does not want our Isaacs. He wants our heart. You understand? But to get to our heart, he will ask us to offer our Isaacs. You understand? If God wants to reach your heart, he's going to sometimes ask you to give up your treasure. Because by asking for your treasure, he gets to your heart. He wanted to touch Abraham's heart, but to reach his heart, he has to ask him to give up what is dear to him. God doesn't want our Isaac. He wants us. But to get to our heart, he will always ask us to give, give our heart. Or give, us, give God something that is important. Because whatever is dear to your heart is what gets to your heart. So when God asks that, he can reach your heart. Listen to this. If you want God to bless you, he will ask for your best and give God your best. God doesn't want leftovers. He wants your best. You know, with Abraham, Isaac was his best offering, so he asked for that. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all other things will be added unto you. Did you know that all along God wanted to bless Abraham? He wanted to be sure that this man can carry on the covenant, the blessing that he has for posterity. But to be able to say that, he said he had to give him a test. God will give you different tests. And he said, now I know that you fear God. Can God say, now I know? God is going to use something to test you. And he's going to say, yes. My child, I can count on him. This man will stand for me for the rest of his life. I know that this man is a faithful man because of what he's done. God wants a testimony from you. He's going to ask, he's going to demand something from you. Can you give up your idea? Are you going to surrender? Total surrender when God asks for your best. Are you going to offer it as a, as a sacrifice for him? Listen to this. This one I'm going to say and then you can uh, 
because I don't want to paraphrase it. God can do the most amazing things at the most unexpected times, through the most unlikely sources, by the most unusual means, to bless you in the most delightful way. <laughs> Isn't that cool? God can use unusual ways to bless you. Very different methods to get to where he wants you to be. So when he asks you to surrender, just surrender it all to him. Give up your Isaac and the blessings will have for So I hope you can all pass the test. The test of faith, the test of character, the test of patience, the steps, the test of fidelity, faithfulness. All the things, all the virtue, kindness, generosity, love, peace, all that. You can't see love until you see hatred. So God is going to make you to test your love. He's going to bring unlovable people in your life to love them. And then you can pass the test. You see what I mean? That shows that you, you, you've passed the test. I hope that when you're put in that situation, you're going to rise to the occasion. You're going to seize the moment. What is that they lack in? See Carpe diem. Carpe diem. Seize the moment. Because the breakthrough comes from passing the test. Please bow your heads with me. Lord, we thank you that you give us different tests. Sometimes we feel that we're going to, through too much struggles, through so many things that demand a huge sacrifice in our lives. Our time, our talents, our treasures all the things that we have to offer to you. But Lord, we know that compared to what you give to us, that is minimal. So help us to pass the test of our character, of our faithfulness, of our obedience in our Christian walk. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Please, I have this prayer request for Harry Peck, Grace Lockhart, Mary Floyd, and a few prayer requests.